It's a massive welcome to everybody worldwide here from East London Grand Prix Circuit. Myself, Greg Maloney, the voice of choice here for the South African Endurance Championship round at the East London Grand Prix Circuit. And it is a big field of cars that have come out to do some battle here today. We've got four hours of endurance racing coming your way. And the next four hours, stay tuned here to our live stream action coming uh, anywhere around the world here on Facebook. And a big uh, welcome to sunny South Africa for an incredible day's racing. It's the most picturesque circuit in the world, in my opinion, and you don't get a better backdrop than coming to race down here at the East London Grand Prix circuit, steeped in history, oodles and oodles of it when you, when you come to uh, see what's uh, been behind the circuit in the past. But of course, we're going to be making some history today. It is the Bigfoot Express Freight 700 and round five of this uh, Mopar Endurance Championship. Colin Hasty is my pit lane consultant. He'll be down in pit lane, and of course, he'll be down on the, the grid as well. They're just going to reset their stuff and get them all sorted out. But uh, as you can see on the track, and uh, actually just below me here, get a couple of shots of those uh, cars already starting to line up, getting their pictures up there before they go racing so they can also put some social media feeds out there. The number one car, the 8 call 247 and Motel-sponsored Ligier, is certainly looking to go a little bit further up the field than what they've uh, qualified on down in third place. Incredibly, the front row is made up of Stuart White and Craig Jarvis in the Maui Homes Janetta G57. And that car is definitely going to be a car we're going to be watching frantically from the very first part of this racing. Due to the fact that we've got a possibility of history being made here today and looking for an opportunity for, of course, looking for a chance. Looking uh, a little bit further down there onto the grid, you can see that we've got uh, some fun and games happening down in the pit lane there. Some photos being taken and uh, a chance to uh, just get those final photos up on the social media. And then uh, behind that, keep an eye out on what's going to be happening down in pit lane. But of course, in pit lane with me today will be Colin Hasty. I'm in my happy place on the grid in front of these magnificent cars for the endurance race. The Bigfoot Express Freight 700. We're going to take a quick walk from pole position down to the back. Stewie White in the Maui. He's starting the car in the Maui Janetta G50Cs. Seven, the, Michael Stephen, this thing, the Aston Martin, is exciting. It sounds magnificent. They're racing for cancer, cancer, breast cancer awareness. Right, second on the grid. Car number one, Nick Adcock, quietly focusing, getting his mind together. Charles Ranges in the McLaren. He's only going to be doing one hour. The first part of this race, the first one hour, is a race within a race. But what we do expect, we, the Janetta, I think, is going to bolt. And then the McLaren and that Aston Martin going to be a race of note. Rion Botma and Sarofan Amava in Ligia. They've had some issues. They've flown in a new throttle body. They've got everything sorted out. Let's have a quick word. Rian, you got all the problems sorted? All the problems sorted. Looking forward to the race. Awesome. Good luck with that. They're going to bolt. And the fastest Italian in South Africa, Franco Di Maria, you ready to roll? I'm ready as can be, my friend. Thank you. Ready as he can be. The Ferrari coming up the back there, that's Kishore Patamba. Bigfoot Express flew down a gearbox. They put the gearbox into the car and they've got it all sorted out. Bradley Scorer starting with Darren Winterboo in this BMW. It bolts down the, the straight like you can't believe. Andrew Colbert and uh, Son Moodley in the car. Tony Martin. Who's in that car? Tony Martin, you've got the... That's uh, Andrew Colbert in the car. You've got your backdraft sorted. You're ready to go. Yeah, backdraft's good. Both of them are going very well today. We're hoping for a good, strong finish. And the uh, Silver Fox. You, you ready to roll? Here we go. We were checking up on helmet colors a little bit earlier. His hair is silver, therefore he has a silver hem. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. He doesn't want, we don't want to see that. Right, here's the backdraft. They've done a little bit of Mike McLaughlin's in the car. They've modified it a bit. They've got a smaller roll bar because we've got a whole lot of uh, space. We've got two minutes left. And we are waiting for an Alfa Romeo. It's either there or there. Kishore Patamba in the Ferrari is in the pit. We don't know. The Alfa has been pushed. Oops. Got an issue. Dirty dog racing. These guys, we call them the kids. 
They have an unbelievable spirit of race. Check them out. The kids have come to roll. They brought some beauty to the place. We've got about a minute left. You go. What's going on here, guys? They brought beauty. <laughs> Hello, Colin. <laughs> How are you doing? Good, thank you. What's your role in the pit lane? Very important. I hold the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Very good. So she keeps you cold. The dog, the rock, is in the car. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Looking forward to it. Good stuff. Right, guys, I think we've got about a minute to go. We saw an alpha into the pit. Have a look around the back here. We don't know. This, they were going to race the Honda. That was the bits and pieces that we were going. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke my inner athlete. <coughs> and I'm Patrick, you stay here. We've got another pit lane starter down the end there. That's the Fritz Kleinans, James Forbes, Ligier. The cars are rolling. The engines are started. They're starting from pit lane. They changed their motor last night. They worked till 3 o'clock. Kishore Patamba also starting from pit lane. The Alpha behind us here has got a gearbox issue. He'll have, if they get it fixed, they will start from pit lane. The drama. The tribulation, the stuff about racing, you have to love it. So we free for all now. I don't have to worry too much about cars coming up behind us. We've got a Marcel Angel in the Honda. Walk with us. Um, you guys ready to roll? We are. We are. Just unfortunate to see what's happened to the Alpha. We were looking forward to a good four hours with them. So I hope they can get it going. Awesome. Good luck for the race. It's starting to get sharp. Patrick, my man, my cameraman, he will be my right hand for the next four and a hours. I hope it's only fours. We're going to have a look at the pit lane start. Kishore Patamba is in the car, and I think it's James Forbes. It's actually, yes, it is Kishore in the car. They've got their gears done. Let's ask him. He's giving us the thumbs up. His gears are sorted. And James Forbes... Last minute in strength. James, you got uh, motor sorted, ready to roll. Great teamwork. We're going to do the best we can. Fantastic. Awesome. Is that just plain water you've got uh, in your drinks bottle? It's as plain as I dare. Got some energy stuff in there as well. So, the energy. These guys, they have to wait for the last car to pass this start-finish line, and then they'll bolt. They're going to have, it's a rolling start. Got to love rolling starts. These things are a little bit gentle on, uh, the rolling starts are a lot more gentle on the gearbox. We've seen gearboxes go. So, for track action, in the box, the man, the voice, himself, Greg Maloney. Take it away, boy. Carl, we've got some exciting racing action about to happen here for the Bigfoot Express Freight 700. Four hours of endurance racing now and stuck behind that magnificent Alfa Romeo as our official pace car and safety car here today. But uh, standing by down in pit lane, of course, is the race winner from the last two rounds. That triple three Ligier of James Forbes and Fritz Kleinons is the car to beat. They have not been better than the last two rounds. They were the top of the podium in both of those rounds. And with a bit of an engine issue, hopefully Forbes' is luck is going to turn around. And there you go for three out of three here today. That'll be interesting to see. The field make their way up to the top towards Beacon. And uh, as they come up towards Beacon Corner, that Alfa Romeo will peel into pit lane and give Stuart White in the Maui Homes, Janetta, the honor of starting this race. And of course, he takes up the mantle of the pace car because alongside him is a multiple South African saloon car champion in Michael Stephen. Michael Stephen against Stuart White. That's a hero versus... Um, his protege, basically, on the front row. Behind that, Charles Arangis looks fired up. He's looking to go now as the green lights are about to start. And we get going for this race. Drop the hammer time. It's time to go racing. Here they go. And down towards turn one they go. And it's Potter's Pass, flat, fastest corner in the South African history. As they go through there, it is Stuart White ahead of Michael Stephen. Tucked in behind them, starting to come through there rapidly. Looks like going to be a little bit of chopping and changing to happen now in the initial stages of this race. But uh, some fun games still to be happening as they get going. The Stradale Motorsport uh, McLaren MP4 is in third place. But remember, Charles Laranges is only doing the hour race. So there's an hour within this four hour that counts towards that. And of course, two cars entered into that one is uh, 
Francois, uh, Francis Carruthers in the uh, Aquila and Charles Laranges. I'm not sure if I saw the Aquila getting back on track, though. We'll keep an eye on it. And, uh, we didn't get a full walk down the pit lane. I don't think he was on the grid at all, but uh, I stand to be corrected as they come down towards gate for the first time now. Top two getting away. Third place comfortable on his own. Behind that, <coughs> they line up with uh, Rion Bortma leading up the Ligier charge. And Bortma ahead of Nick Adcock. As they come through there, you can see uh, Andrew Culbert, Darren Vinterboer, all fighting for saloon car honors there. And of course, in their respective categories and classes, that'll be racing here for the entire four hours of action that has just started. Already some action at the back end as the Ferrari starts to make its way through. So does James Forbes. First lap completed in anger. And it's Stuart White, who is pulling away ever so slightly there from the point blank racing machine, as well as from Michael Stephen. So Michael Stephen at this point in second place. It's Charles Arangis in third, Botmer is in fourth place. Triple three racing, point blank at the back. They'll have to work their way through. They've made up about four or five positions as they come across the site. The second lap in anger here in this four hour endurance. It took about, uh, just waiting for the timing monitor to refresh here quickly. Just want to get a refresh on our timing monitor so I can give you the exact times of what went down there. But Stuart White is definitely leading things out at the front end and uh, looking pretty tasty for uh, the first part of the proceedings here. If everything goes according to plan though, they're expecting that car to possibly set a new outright lap record and that's what a lot of punters have been saying as to what's going to be happening here today and a very good possibility that uh, the current lap record which we argued and uh, complained about last year at this event uh, with a lot of people on uh, social media too in the interaction that we've got here with the social media feed um, that it is in the currently in the hands of Ian Schechter. So Schechter's time might just be blown out the water today if Stuart White gets it all right here in this Ginetta. Behind him, Michael Stephen fighting hard in the Aston Martin that was previously piloted by Charles Arangis. Arangis is on his tail. So that's how things go. 1 minute 16 dead there. That's the first official flying lap coming out of Stuart White. It's not quick enough yet. He's got to get down to about a 1 minute 15.2 if he wants that outright, outright lap record. Stephen doing... 1 minute 19s, 120s coming out of Rurangis. Rion Bortma also in the 20s. Adcock in the 23s. Franco de Matteo moves up into 6th place. He is doing 1 minute 25s. It's Andrew Colbert in the Bigfoot Express Freight Porsche who's in 7th. Ahead of Brad Scorer. He of course in the Alfa Romeo. Then you've got Mike McLaughlin and Dane Angel making up the top 10. Andrew Horn just outside the top 10 there for Nash Motorsports. So that's how things have kicked off here for the first part of this race. And uh, it's going to just settle down. And then, of course, we'll see lots of action that will start to happen. Colin is uh, down in pit lane. Here we're going to him all the time. So let's go down to Colin and find out if he's got any, inform any information as to what's been happening in these first couple of laps. Keegan Ward, I didn't want to talk to you now. What's with the gearbox? Uh, we seem to have lost drive somewhere. So I don't know if it's a clutch or CV or gearbox problem or what. But, yeah, the guys are stripping it. So, yeah, but unlucky. Eh? So on the warm-up lap coming through the last corner and, yeah, just lost it. So, coming out of the last corner, and you're ready to go for the start, all excited, no drive. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, you know, it's uh, very disappointing, a lot of effort for this weekend, and uh, yeah, we didn't even make the start, so one of those things. But, uh, let's see if they can fix it quickly, and maybe we can rejoin, eh? You've got a great team of Mackies, they're grafting hard inside there, it's all hot, good luck, eh? Yeah, I'm sure they'll try their best, but yeah, let's see what happens. Eh? Thanks for talking to us. All right, Colin, enjoy. Us, uh, not lacquer in the beginning of a race, seeing a car like this. Greg, back on the track. Action, go. Yeah, Carl, it's not the way you want to be starting, that's for sure, particularly when you're uh, one of the big sponsors that are uh, expecting big things from your team. So um, hopefully that'll get all sorted out and they can get that car back on track. But uh, right now, action continuing, as always, and it doesn't stop. It's great to see. Um, big welcome to all of our people that are watching out on Facebook and of course uh, looking forward to seeing what's going. Hello Farney Scots, how's it going bud? <laughs> Tonya Watts has joined us too, so is Jim Page and a lot of other people that are jumping onto the feed here. Please make sure that you like and share us and uh, tell all the people about what's happening. Uh, interesting factor to be brought in right from the word go is Stuart White is already into back markers and he has only completed three laps in this four hours. So uh, it's going to be only two clear laps that he's got to play with. And uh, as he gets all sorted out there, we're going to try and pick up on what his times are and what he's been doing in terms of lap times. Looking at the lap times right now, it's down into the 18s for him. So maybe not concentrating just too much effort yet to look at that uh, lap record. But now with traffic, it's going to be very difficult to set a hot lap time. So the 16 dead 
might be the quickest lap we see today because of uh, the traffic issues that uh, Stuart's going to now find himself in as he's crossed the line now for uh, uh, another lap completed here today. And that's not a bad effort at all. Four laps down, and he's already pulled 10.8 seconds on Michael Stephen in the Aston Martin. Stephen in second place, Arangis in third, and Rian Botma down in fourth place. We've got a problem. Is that Kish Patamba? Yes. Kish Patamba down at the exit point of Cocabana. The Ferrari is on the sideline. So it doesn't look like that gearbox issue has been sorted. Or the, is there another gremlin that's come to haunt that Ferrari? Kishio Patamba parked on the left-hand side, as you can see there in the shot. And uh, in harm's way. Very good possibility that safety car might need to be deployed. As I say that, we've got uh, Andrew Culbert coming into pit lane as well for Bigfoot Express Freight in the Porsche 997. And so we've got Ferrari on the left-hand side there. You can see it down at Cocabana. And in pit lane, I've got a Porsche. And I don't think that's a scheduled stop there for Andrew Culbert. That's for sure. Colin is down there. If he gets uh, up close and personal with the action, we'll check what's happening. But we'll stay on what's going to happen there with uh, the action out on track with Kishore Patamba parked on the sideline. You can see that uh, Culbert is having to pull that car back into the pit box, which means there's probably going to be some work done. But Colin's down there. Let's find out what's going down. Not the scheduled stop. They're bringing the car back into the pits. When he left for the race, battled a little bit to get it going, get out of the the pit lane and safety car board is just flying to get the Patamba Ferrari back. We're going to try and see if we can get a word with Andrew on what the story is with the car. He's still in the car. Uh, he's not going to talk. Windows up. It's very difficult sometimes when you want to shove a mic in the guy's face. Not so lacquer to do it, but we try and bring you the story, let you know what's going on. Let's have a quick word. Can we talk? No, he doesn't want to talk. Guys, we're going to go back up to Patamba and see what the story is. Our fast friend is having a bit of a bad day. He's got the, they think it's a clutch problem on the Alpha and they're busy taking the whole drive, the, the whole thing in Majigas apart and they'll get it sorted. In the meantime, here is the pit for, let's get an idea. Have you got any idea what's happened to Kishore? Yeah, he's got an issue with the throttle. Uh, he lost throttle, so it's an electronic issue. When we started it up this morning, it gave us an issue, and then we thought we'd fix it, but obviously not. You're having a bit of a rough day. Yeah, I suppose. That's motor racing. Some days you're the statue, and other days you're the pigeon. Yes, yeah, no. Unfortunately, you get used to this shit, but that's how it is. Freddy, <laughs> good luck. Okay, thank you. Greg. Talk us through the cars in the, on the track, and when the Ferrari comes back, we're going to stick the camera where they, we can see stuff, and Greg, take it away. Yeah, some interesting action there right from the word go. Kishore Patamba parked down at Cocabana. Uh, we've got the recovery vehicle to go and pick up on that Ferrari. He's going to be towed back to uh, pit lane, hopefully, and in time for them to get work done on that car. But uh, that's the, I think the third major issue of that they've had with that car so far this weekend. So a little bit of a concern there for Patamba's point of view. But uh, he's got some, some great help in the form of um, Fast Fred from F um, Fast Developments at Swatkops. Uh, that must be real, real daunting to watch the entire field go p piling past you under safety car while you're being towed behind the back end of a bucky. So that's definitely not the way he wants to be uh, finishing up this race. And hopefully they can get that car back to pit lane and in time to get the car sorted out. He started already from pit lane. So it hasn't quite gone according to plan there for Kishio Patamba and that team. Let's see if they get this thing sorted by the time they get it back into the pit box. Rest of the field though, still circulating behind that uh, Alfa Romeo, our official safety car here for the Bigfoot Express Freight 700. Stuart White currently leading out over Michael Stevens, Charles Orangis, Rion Bortma, Nick Adcock, Frank De Matteo, Brad Scorer, Mike McLaughlin, Dane Angel, and Andrew Horn, your top 10 as it stands. So Horn already into the top 10 there for Nash Motorsports. Not a bad effort there from the Nash Motorsport team. Okay, looks like we might have a bit of a fire issue as well. One of the cars just catching a light. I think it's in the, I think it might be in the complex there. I don't see any flames around, but I think it's in the complex. So if we pan left on our complex shot there, just pan left on that shot, guys. We should see it. It's just on the left-hand side of that shot that you've got on, on screen right now. I don't know if that camera can go any further left than what it is.
Right, we're down here in the pits with the triple three guys. You worked until three o'clock this morning. You got a message on the radio. What did James say? He said, guys, the car is getting quite hot inside, and next minute he said it's on fire, and he pulled off to the side of the track. And you've lost communication with him? We've lost communication, but according to him, he's fine. That's all that counts at the moment. It's a bit gut-wrenching for you guys. Hopefully you can get the car back into the pits, fix it, and go racing again. Well, we did have a, a target coming into the, this event, winning the last two. So this is how the cookie crumbles, I suppose, eh? But you guys never give up. You've got an unbelievable chiss in the, the team. You're smiling. I know you can see you're dog-tired. You've got some work to do. Good luck with it. Well, we'll wait until the car gets back. Let's go again. Awesome. That's what we know. Well, there you can see the what shot of the car parked on the down. sideline, and uh, they're going to have to get that car back in. You can see despondent on the sideline there, James Forbes, kicking the grass and not really, not really uh, concerned, but as you can see, pushing hard here as he gets up onto uh, the back of that flatbed and gets back into pit lane. They might still have a chance to fix it. There's a bit of damage on the back, but I think it's just they've removed the, uh, the, rear, co the, the rear cone of that car to ensure that they uh, can get to the, the, the fire and get it sorted out immediately. But as you can see, um, now it's just a matter of time of getting that car onto the flatbed. But while we're waiting for that flatbed, let's get back to Carl. Nick, um, you've got the car back now. The, what's the story? So we've lost uh, throttle control. So there, it's a drive-by-wire throttle, and there seems to be an electronics issue. So our gearbox woes are solved. We're now trying to figure out why we're losing throttle. A damn wire. Uh, exactly. That's what always kills you. Probably a 50-cent part, isn't it? But you can fix it. I see there's tie wraps being applied. Who's got the roll of duct tape? That's it. Roll, roll of duct tape and tie zips sort all the problems out. Hopefully we'll be out in two minutes. Awesome. Thanks for talking to us. Let's go and have a quick look in here. <clears throat> Patrick, if you can stick your camera in here, we can see. There we go. Tie wraps. Got to look for a piece of duct tape on this car. It's not a proper racing car if it hasn't got duct tape in it. So what they look like they're doing is just uh, putting the plug back onto the throttle body, get the wires all nice and, and tight, and they will get rocking and rolling. And in the meantime, we're waiting for the triple three car, the Fritz Kleinans, James Forbes car, to get back into the pits. Greg, we're going to call back basically to what's now. happening with that car at this stage is uh, they're trying to get it onto the flatbed. So if we go back down into uh, the, the shot of, of the complex... Uh, there you can see they're working frantically to get that car onto the flatbed, not to do any damage. It's a bit difficult with these low-slung uh, sports cars to, to get them onto that flatbed and not do any more damage to the car than already has been done. Uh, the idea is to get it onto the flatbed, get it back to pit lane. They'll probably be able to exit the, um, the track just to the left-hand side of where they are there because that's the, uh, of course, entrance and exit point of the pit lane for the cart circuit. So there is an access road they could possibly use once they've got that car on board. You can see James just helping them get it on and trying to avoid any damage to the car as it gets rolled onto that flatbed. But once that happens, then, of course, the, the safety car will be uh, pulled back in and we can go racing again. Right now, we've completed about five laps under safety car, and we haven't even finished 15 minutes of racing. So it's really a bit of a, a, a tough start to this one down here at East London Grand Prix Circuit, and not exactly what a lot of these teams expected. They were kind of counting on reliability and uh, their ability of their drivers to see them through, at least for the first couple of hours. But, uh, of course, some of the teams have battled with that, particularly the one team who are coming into this round and, of course, are now sitting with a situation where their two previous victories in the last two rounds are now being uh, sort of washed away and uh, stuck on the sideline is not where they want it to be. Safety car is maintaining some good pace here and allowing these guys to keep their engines cool, keep the tyres relatively warm. Although when they do do the restart, there's going to be a good possibility that they will have to think uh, carefully about how they position those cars and how quick they go into that first lap in anger because the idea is of course that you don't want to be throwing it away after a whole lot of safety car laps and it is definitely something that has happened in the past and you would have seen it in various endurance race and uh, endurance racing championships around the world is that as soon as the safety car goes in the guys will try and put in a, a hot lap to try and get away from their contenders that have now concertined it up with them and get caught up with cold tires so there's going to be a lot of uh, radio communication happening, I'm sure, from pit lane to the drivers down there. And they're uh, warning them about the fact that uh, they're still under yellow. They're probably going to be under yellow for at least another two or three laps while they recover that vehicle. And while the, flatbed, the car is on the flatbed, I can see that in the background, 
But uh, just a big welcome to everybody else out there, and we hope you're enjoying everything so far. Um, as you can see, awesome race action to start with. Yes, Peter van der Spey, you're not wrong. Um, and we're trying to uh, bring you all that action. You see James at the wheel, trying to keep the wheel straight so that he can get that car on there. And it looks like, uh, looks like we're going to be some, uh, some, some more action down in the, at the Ferrari uh, with Colin. He's going to be checking out what's going down there. So, Cole, what's going down with that Ferrari, buddy? When you brought the car and you put it into the box, jacked it up, what were you doing? We're having issues with our brakes. Um, we've got a pedal that just keeps going down to the floorboard. And not what you want in East London? Definitely not what you want going through Cocabana. So we are actually going to put the car in the garage and park it. You're not going to bring it in every now and then and keep bleeding the brakes and having a go? Well, Andrew's just had one sort of hard push lap trying to catch the tail and lost brakes again already. So it's just not worth it. Not worth the risk, not worth the, the price of the car. And never mind the car, they can be replaced, but it's uh, drivers and spectators. Yeah, so yeah, just safety on all rounds. So we just got to really, really think about it and just be, be wise about it and try not push on and try not be stupid about it. Do you know what the phase of the moon is? Because this race has been unbelievable from yesterday. Uh, Lamborghinis on top of tires, brakes, engines, gearbox, clutches, stuff. Yeah, no idea. Yesterday morning I woke up and I was, I felt sick. And I don't know why. Just like had a horrible pit in your stomach. And that was before we even got you. So I don't, <laughs> don't know what it is. Eh? Well, thanks a lot for sharing with us and uh, do the wise decision. It's hard, but you've got to do the right thing. Yeah, no, we'll see. I'll just see what Andrew says now, but I, I think we're going to be in in a, in a short while. We'll have a chat with him now. Seems to be picking up a bit of pace. There he goes. Great sounding car. But yeah, we'll, we'll just see what he says. We'll have a chat with him and we'll, we'll make a decision. But if we come in, we're probably going to park it. Right, thanks a lot. And those are the kind of decisions you've got to make. Lives are more important than bits of metal and glory in terms of winning races. They're still under safety car conditions. We're waiting for the 333 to get back. And we'll, the guys down the team there, they, as I say, they worked until 3 o'clock this morning. They are dog-tired, but they've got gears, they've got the spirit, and they want to go racing. This is the car that has won the last two races. They had high hopes for this weekend. We'll see. Greg, I uh, got will, the Cole. car There's onto no the, it is on the flatbed, the yeah. flatbed, it's on the yeah. flatbed. and uh, in fact, the field is going past it for the seventh time now, and uh, that must be very, very uh, hectic for uh, James Forbes to be watching those cars go flying past every single time while he's stuck on the back end of a flatbed truck that's going to bring his car back in the pit lane. The truck is rolling, that's a good thing. And there's a very good possibility that that truck uh, gets going at a, at a relatively good pace and exits where I think it should be, which will be at the, uh, the pit lane exit for the kart circuit, or are they going to make it go all the way around? If they make it go all the way around, it means we'll probably still have one more lap under safety car because I don't think the truck will be able to do a decent enough lap time to ensure that they can pull that safety car in. No, safety car lights are still on. We've got Brad Scorer coming into pit lane at this stage, so he's timed uh, his pit lane uh, stop now to be just before the, the pit lane uh, or the safety car comes off the circuit. I don't know if that's a, st uh, 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 a scheduled stop. It looks like it is because they're all waiting for him. Maybe they're coming in for a quick splash and dash and change up and uh, changing their strategy because of the fact that they've been out there for such a long time under safety car. It might be a good strategy to have there for the Alfa Romeo team. They have pulled the car into the pit box, which means they might be doing some work on it. Culbert is back in the pit lane as well. So I would say with Culbert coming in, they might have a possibility of having a look at uh, that car's brakes again and seeing whether or not it's going to be in or out of this race and whether it's going to continue. As the flatbed comes out of Beacon, that car will be now be making its way into pit lane and hopefully get back down to the team at Point Blank Racing to get it sorted. If they can get it sorted, hopefully they can get the car back on track and he's still got a chance of scoring some points here today in this uh, incredible race. And what an incredible race it's been. I can't believe how much action we've had so far and how many incidents we've had so far here. So the Porsche comes in, Bigfoot Express Freight uh, rolls it back into the pit box. The Ferrari is about to go back out on track, which is good to see. They might have sorted out that uh, zip ties and duct tape situation that was required, but the Ferrari is definitely back on track and flies past our COC as he heads down towards turn one, Potter's Pass. Just waiting to see whether or not we're going to see lights out on the Alpha at the front, our official safety car. The lights are out. So, 
As we, if you've just joined us here, at East London Grand Prix Circuit, a little bit of action so far, an incredible amount of action so far, and now we're going to kick it off again, because safety car lights are off, that car will now accelerate and get away from the pack of cars behind it, peel into pit lane, and once again, it'll now be Nick Adcock who will dictate the pace from the front, as he's the lead car at this stage, he's not the leading car on track, he currently sits down in about fourth place overall, but fantastic to see that... Uh, we are going to get going again. Big welcome to all of our guys watching from all around the world. It's fantastic to have you guys here as well. And as you join us, we have completed 21 laps, uh, 21 minutes of action. But most of that has been under safety car. And Adcock leads them across the line behind him. Dimato, Vinterpur, McLaughlin. Fantastic start here as they go across. Everybody back up in flight. Now, one thing we need to watch out for on this lap and maybe just hold Colin for a while. Let's just keep an eye on, on the, the tires of these guys and whether or not they've been able to keep the heat in their rubber because this is the first lap in anger now after about eight laps under safety car. So the tyres are not going to be fully up to temperature yet. We'll just watch for a couple of incidents in case any happen and then head back down into pit lane with Colin who will bring us up to speed with I think what's happening down at the Bigfoot Express Freight uh, Porsche as well as what's happening down at Alpha. The Ferrari comes out of Beacon. Sounds like the throttle seems to be on full flight this time. You can hear the growl and the whine of that incredible car that comes across the line there. And Colin is standing by as our field head down towards Gate Corner. Somewhere. Right, I'm in the Alpha pits. You can see the guts of the, the gearbox here. And there, at the end of the shaft, this is why there's no drive. So that is the input shaft into the gearbox. Should be broken. So they don't have a spare one. Park the car. That's not so lacquer. This day is turning into a bit of a... With, this is the Mopar South African Endurance Series. So Alpha are part of the group. There are other Alphas in the pits as well. When I asked them why, they said there's a cluck cluck noise in the gearbox. They don't know what it is. A cluck cluck noise from the front. Never lacquer around this sort of um, track. Let's see if we can get some more word. The guys are delving deep into the beast. Let's have a quick word with Freddy. Freddy, you've got a cluck cluck noise in this car. What is it? No, I don't know. We're still looking to see if we can find the problem. Something CV related. Right. Related or something like that. <laughs> and you got a. Is that smile? <laughs> saving fuel. <laughs> We're going to leave it there. Freddy's on fuel save mode. I think he saved about 19,000 liters between these two cars so far. Right, so the gearbox is broken and they did bring the Sun Mudley car into the pits with its, um, its spongy brake pedal. We were waiting to talk to Andrew Culbert. I want to see how wide his eyes were. The other thing is the triple three, the James Forbes Fritz Kleinhans car, a car that's won the last two of these endurance races, made its way on the flat bag. They're not gonna bring the car down the pit lane to fix it. It looks like the engine, the technical term for what happened to it is it let go. It dumped its guts and that was part of what made um, things very hot. We haven't got a link down to get you pictures of it, but I'm going to go and check it out with my R's and I'll let you know. In the meantime, Greg, there's racing on the track. Talk to us about it. Now, lots of action out there at the moment. Stuart White maintaining his lead over Michael Steven already up to 8.6 seconds between White and Michael Steven. Charles Orange is there in third place, and remember, he's only participating in the hour endurance, so the first hour of this race is where Orange wants to be at the front end, and he is at the moment of that particular category. In fact, he's the only car in the hour endurance race, so maybe they'll change their mind and stick out there for a little bit longer. Let's see what their strategy is later. A big welcome back here from East London Grand Prix Circuit and the South African Endurance Series. It's the Bigfoot Express Freight 700, a four-hour endurance race here at the East London Grand Prix Circuit. And a massive welcome back to everybody who joined us earlier on. Uh, nothing much has changed since you left. Uh, we did have a, a small gremlin there, but it's all been sorted out. Uh, the big gremlin right now, of course, is Stuart White as he starts to tick cars off left, right, and center. And coming across the line in front of me is absolutely flying. So definitely a man to watch out for on track is Stuart White in that Maui Holmes uh, Janetta for his and Craig Jarvis. Michael Stephen currently sits in second place. He's about to come across the line any second now. 
And uh, he is in the Calix Aston Martin Vantage. McLaren MP4 of Charles Larangis. He's participating only in the hour endurance here. He's up to third place ahead of Rion Bortma. And Nick Adcock is actually on the road ahead of Rion Bortma, but on the timing monitor behind him. So Adcock's got to make up almost an entire lap to get through there. So I don't know what happened quite there with uh, how things changed up, but Adcock's got some work to do and will have to come through. Franco de Matteo, the Italian stallion, will be partnering with Romano Satori here this weekend. He's in sixth place. Brad Scorer down in seventh still and still ticking off as seventh place, although he is stuck in pit lane. I'm not sure if they've got that alpha going. I think I might have just caught it in the corner of my eye leaving pit lane. Let's just see if that is the alpha. Yes, it is. The alpha makes its way back onto track. So good job there from the Mopar team and from Fast Fred to get that car back on track. McLaughlin is up into eighth place in the backdraft Cobra with uh, John Oliver actually just going ahead of him ever so slightly. And then as things get sorted out, uh, you can see a little bit of a change up on our timing monitor. As you can see, they're shuffling all the time. Dane Angel, though, is in 10th place just behind Andrew Horn. So that's your top 10 as you join us once again here at the Bigfoot Express Freight 700. And it's uh, the penultimate round here, of course, of the South African Endurance Series. So uh, big action already on track. Lots of cars in pit lane that are potentially out of the day's racing. One of them, one of the most notable ones, of course, is the Alfa Romeo there of Keegan Ward and uh, Theo van Furen, but they are working frantically to see if they can get that car sorted out. I know that Colin had a chat to them. Coming into pit lane, though, is our, our endurance runner. That is Charles Orangis in the McLaren MP4, and he comes into pit lane there, and I can see Colin just uh, about to pounce on that car to go and find out if everything's going according to plan. So as soon as Colin's ready, we'll hand down to him. He looks like he's making his way across there, just waiting for Patrick to go and join him. Our camera guy down in the crew and in the pit lane. The Ferrari of Kish Patamba is still cruising now, and it's good to see that they've got that throttle sorted out on that uh, 360 car. And behind that, Darren Winterbur still flying in the Baron's Motor Spares BMW. Let's go down to Cole and find out what's happening. Harry Arangi is part of the one-hour race is that you've got to have a pit stop. It's a little bit frustrating when you just walk around the car and check out how lacquer it is. Everything all right so far? Yeah, Charles says everything is good. Um, he was held up in the bulk quite a bit, and that's why I decided to come in now. Do the pit stop and do the next half an hour. And then just go flat out till the end? Yeah, now it's going to go flat out till the end. Will it be rude to try and stick our microphone in, the, in his face? No, I think... Let's have a look. We can have a quick little word, yeah. Charles, everything lacquer? Yeah, everything is good, eh? It's uh, just the traffic was a bit uh, irritating there. That's why I came in. Me and uh, Michael were, you know, fighting a bit, but yeah, the Aston's just got the legs on me in the stretch. And it's quite warm in here. Haven't you turned the air conditioner on yet? I wish I had one, but. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, thanks. It's always kind of lacquer to be able to check out what's happening in the car. Always, let's get out of the word of advice. Colin's helpful hints. Get out of the pit lane. So they're going to finish their two minutes and they'll bolt. Greg, back to you. Thanks, Cole. Yeah, not much has changed up top here at this stage. Things starting to just settle down ever so slightly, which is always a good sign when it comes to endurance racing. Lights flashing from Stuart White onto the back end of Kish Patamba to warn him that that Jeanette is coming through. And it shouldn't be too much of an issue heading down towards uh, Potters. He goes up the inside and uh, makes the move stick into Potters. Coming up on Darren Winterbur now. That'll be the next car in his sights in the Barons Motor Spares BMW. As he heads down towards Rifle, he'll have that Jeanette of Stuart White's closing down on him rapidly. Stuart currently lapping in the 17.8s. 1 minute 17.8s. He's done a 16 dead earlier on. But uh, now, as you've just heard from Charles Orangis himself, uh, traffic is a big concern and a big issue right until the end of this race. Uh, the ability to get through the traffic unharmed, unscathed, and hopefully uh, not losing too much ground or time when it comes to this format of racing. 34 minutes completed exactly. And a long way to go still for a lot of these drivers. Remember, some of them are piloting these cars on their own. Most of them, though, have got teammates today. And we'll be working frantically to get uh, things sorted out. A couple of things that happened over the weekend that you might have picked up on on our social media feeds and on uh, ILEB is the fact that we lost Gavin Cronier and Simon Murray's car yesterday in qualifying. Cronier, on an absolute flyer, went through Potter's flat in the Lamborghini and unfortunately he just put a wheel on the outside of the circuit and ended up destroying the Lamborghini. 
that was going to be participating in this one. So uh, Stuart White now ahead of Darren Vinterboer, pulling away from the BMW as they come out of Beacon. Going back to that incident with Cronier, he's all okay. But uh, there were a lot of photos put up of that uh, very second-hand Lamborghini that ended up on the inside wall um, on the exit point of Potter's Pass, the fastest corner in the Southern Hemisphere. So definitely something to be concerned about there, and I'm sure that they'll try and get that car salvaged as much as possible and get a new one sorted as quickly as they can. Michael Stephen, first time out for him in an endurance race in the SA Endurance Series. He is a teammate to Paul Hill. Also put in some very good and respectable lap times yesterday, but of course being a multiple South African champion in almost every single format of uh, motorsport in this country has to offer, he definitely knows what to do, and particularly here at East London Grand Prix Circuit, which is only just down the road from his hometown in PE. So uh, he's done a couple of laps around here in various forms of motorsport, uh, taking multiple Polo Cup championships, multiple saloon car championships, production car championships, touring car championships, and current three-time GTC champion. So when it comes to driving a saloon car, there's uh, not a lot of people that can do it a lot better than Michael Stephen can. And he currently sits in second place in that Calix Aston Martin of Paul Hills, his teammate. Rian Bortma has moved to third. So Bortma up into third place now and uh, bringing his car into contention for a top three there with Sorrel van der Merwe as his teammate. Supervan will be itching to get behind the wheel, I'm sure, and have a go with uh, the traffic that's out there. Current champion in the class and, of course, uh, the number one car on track. He's down in fourth place, Nick Adcock at the wheel right now with Michael Jensen also waiting in the, the sidelines to jump into the car as soon as the allocation for their pit stop and when they've planned it happens. Uh, Franco Nobito is the top five man and he, of course, flying high at this stage and uh, pushing hard in his Ligier alongside his teammate Romano Satori who will also be waiting to climb into that car when the 27 machine comes back into pit lane. Brad Scorer. We saw him in and out of pit lane, so there's a little bit of work there to do for them, but Scorer eventually gets all sorted out and uh, gets back on track. And, of course, he's, uh, he's currently piloting that, Bar that Barron's Motorspares BMW of Darren Vinterburs. And then you've got McLaughlin ahead of Andrew Horn and Dane Angel. And then, of course, it's Dean Wilson making up the top ten. But Colin's got some information down in pit lane. Well, yeah, Greg, we were standing by to talk to Andrew Colbert who was about to get back into the car. They had a brake pedal that was going all the way to the floor and his eyes are quite wide, as one would expect. So they've bled the brakes properly. They've replaced all the brake fluid. They've done all the checks that they need to do. He's just got back into the car now and they're gonna go out and have a full on go. This car is running in the four hour race. So there's a long way to go. And they're just busy putting the, doing the last little checks, making sure that everything is tight and uh, putting the tyres back on. So back to the racing. Thanks, Cole. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see whether they've got that brake issue sorted out on the Porsche. No brake issues on the Aston Martin, though. The only problem is that he just can't brake away from uh, Rion Portman. He can't brake the gap that he's lost now to Stuart White. And the gap right now is 29 seconds to uh, Michael Stephen down in second place. Stuart White doing an incredible job just flashing the lights every time he comes up on traffic, telling the long way back that he's coming and warning them to get out the way and give him some space or just hold their lines so they can get through and he can find a way past them. That's how it works. Has a slightly slower car coming up on those guys. Just to be aware of the, the faster cars coming and look out for the flags that are being issued as well. Information from our COC there, Eric Schultz, who's doing a phenomenal job and I've got to take my hat off to him. Having stepped up to national championship uh, COC duties in the Falcon Polo Cup, he's also now being oppo given the opportunity to be the COC here today. And he's just come up and give us some information with Fritz Kleinanz. And uh, in fact, we're going to go down to Fritz Kleinanz. So I probably won't take away the, uh, the uh, information that Colin's going to give you. But uh, if he doesn't mention it when you come back, I'll let you know what went wrong with that car. But let's go down to Cole and Fritz. Fritz, it's never lacquer seeing you without your overall on. And you've got the, what really happened with the car this morning? Well, as you know, we replaced the motor uh, last night. Um, we got a, a gift from Rion uh, to use the spare motor. Uh, we didn't really know of the, the condition of the motor, but uh, it runs sweetly this morning. Everything was fine. And uh, we started from pit lane. And a few laps later, um, there was a fire. Uh, in the engine bay and what happened was is that uh, the engine blocked on the right hand side uh, there's a big crack 
and the engine oil spilled onto the manifold. And of course, oil and, uh, and heat doesn't work well together. Like and so it was actually an oil fire. Uh, the fire extinguisher was able to, to stop it. Uh, there's not too much damage to the car, of course, but uh, the, main, the motor is completely blown again. So this is our second motor for the weekend. But you know, your guys were ready to change another motor and get going, but it would have finished before the end of the race. I was actually joking, you know. And, and there was almost a moment of, yeah, let's do it, you know. <laughs> but of course, it's not, impos not possible. But if you'd asked them to do it, they would. They're a proper team. Oh, they're a proper team, yeah. No, these guys go more than, do more than, than the necessary to uh, keep us on track. No, the, the Action Race boys are brilliant. They're a really good team. Well, at least uh, I'm happy to see you haven't lost your sense of humor and smile and enjoy the racing. No, no I'm going to sit back and enjoy the rest of the race. And you may indulge in a cool drink. I may have, yeah, I may. An energy drink. <laughs> Fritz, thanks a lot for talking to you. So there you go. A crack in the block of the engine, and that's not so lacquer. So for now, we're going back to Greg. Tell us about the racing. Well, not much has happened since we went down to Fritz Kleinons. Uh, pretty much uh, staying stationary for now. Not really too much action in terms of chopping and changing in the classes or in the overall. Uh, as you left us, they've stayed pretty much exactly the same in the top 10. Dean Wilson and Trevor Graham now 11th and 12th, with Eric Solomon down in 13th place in that little Lotus 23. Byron Oliver is up in the 14th. Kish Patamba, incredibly, after starting from pit lane and having to come in to get a, a throttle body sorted out, is up to 15th place overall. Uli Sana out there as well, doing a good job in the second of the Alphas. He's now made his way back up into 16th place, so some work being done there by Uli. Uh, a man who originally was, of course, a big supporter of a, of a German brand as opposed to the Italian brand he's driving for today. And uh, spent a lot of time back and forth from all around the world as being one of the head honchos for BMW. It's Stuart White, though, that is dominating this race up front and currently lapping consistently in the 19s. Um, and not really concerned about lap records right now because, as I said, there's just too much traffic out there for uh, him to, to worry about trying to get lap records in. Michael Steven has got quicker and quicker, and he just maintains currently a uh, possibility of running a 19.4 as his fastest, but in the, the 25s and the 22s at this stage, sort of in that, in that bracket and staying as consistent as he can possibly can. He'll be pushing to uh, try and maintain that second place when he hands it over to Paul Hill a bit later on. Rion Bortba doing the same thing and then probably have a similar type strategy to what he wants to do. And that would be to hand over to Sorrel van der with the car still in third place ahead of Nick Adcock, the current reigning champions in this class. Um, Michael Jensen probably be watching the timing monitors, watching the feed as well and finding out what, uh, what's actually happening out on track. As you can see them heading down on the beach straight there. Gerald Wright closing in on the back end of Dane Angel. Adcock closing in on the back end of both of them as they head down that beach straight away. The, uh, the sl slightly ailing Ferrari still circulating here. Patamba trying to nurse it home. Looks like Andrew Colbert has got the Bigfoot Express Freight Porsche back up and flying. And uh, doesn't look like there's a brake issue there now with the, the amount of pace he's looking to go into Potters in. Move on the inside from Adcock in the complex through on Angel. Makes it pretty simply. The one concern you've got though in a race like this, <coughs> beg your pardon, is to um, take into account that you've got saloon cars and sports cars and the lower slung sports cars are not always easy to spot when you're in a saloon car. So when you come up on a saloon car, even when you come up on a, an, another sports car, you definitely want to make sure that they have seen you before you try and make an overtake. Because on a few occasions in the past and a few occasions actually in the last couple of rounds of this championship, um, bad decisions from drivers to overtake at the wrong time have been costly so uh, they've got to be very careful about that there there's a great example of it coming out and the shot you're going to see right now the slightly higher backdraft cobra of brian evans and right on his tail of course is eric solomon so i think trevor graham is at the wheel of that uh, car right now the backdraft cobra but um it's the car that brian evans will be brian evans beg your pardon not brian evans Brian Martin. There's too many Brian's and Richards to remember here today. <laughs> but Brian Martin will be at the wheel of that car a little bit later on. So it'll be interesting to see how those cars, when they're so closely matched and so evenly matched, is, is going to be something to watch out for. 
It looks like our lead car is about to come in for a, a scheduled stop uh, and possibility of him coming in. Not quite yet because it's the Aston Martin that's coming through there. I'm going to watch for that Janetta coming up the back straight. And uh, according to Colin, he might be making his way in the pit lane there. Possibility of a, of a, a fuel and uh, just a double check of everything in that car. I don't think there's anything wrong with Stuart White's car at this stage. It might just be part of their, their planning. With 45 minutes completed, they might just be giving each other some, some room to play and some time to be in the car. Stuart White's done an admirable job so far to keep that car out front. And I'm looking to see if I can spot it up the back straight. There goes Brian Martin. There goes the McLaren. Then you've got the Lotus. Here comes the Janetta. And, well, he's flashing lights. He's not going into pit lane right now. He goes down past the pit lane. I don't think he saw the pit board. But I'm sure that pit board will tell him now. Colin, what happened with that pit stop, bud? Right. We thought they were coming in for a routine pit stop. Craig Jarvis has got his helmet on. He's ready to rock. They've got tyres ready. The marshals have all got their helmets on. And that was the telltale for us that something was happening. I asked them um, what was the time for them to come into the pits. They said another 20 minutes. And the reason they all suited and booted and almost ready to go is they thought they had a problem. And then they know now they don't. But thinking you've got a problem, there's niggles. I'm sure that there's a mysterious phase of the moon and the chakras are not aligned in East London. This has been a most eventful race. Something is happening. So, we've got the Andrew Colbert car coming into the pits. Word was, they rebled the brakes and it's still going to the, it's still the same, they said. Pedal going to the floor and they, it looks like they definitely are going to park it now. So, there's a whole lot of nothing happening here. They're waiting. There is an issue. I'm going to go and dig, and we're going to find out what it is and bring it to you. In the meantime, back to you, Greg. Thanks, Cole. Uh, getting some information from Pitlane myself from some of the, um, the teams down there and feeding us information via, of course, social media as well as WhatsApp and any other format that we can get it in. I did get a message from Stuart's dad, uh, Dave White, sending me a message saying that the 1 minute 16.076 apparently is the new outright lap record for Stuart White. So I'm going to get confirmation of that, but uh, I don't think Dave would uh, be saying that unless he actually knew that that was actually the case. I had an inkling it was about a 16.2 that had to be beaten. And if he's gone 16 dead, yes, and that, that means, of course, it would be a brand new outright lap record set here at East London Grand Prix circuit here today. And, of course, you've just witnessed history in the making. Because the last time that lap record was set was in the hands of Ian Schechter in a Formula Atlantic. And that was in the 70s. So it's about 40 years in the making to get that lap record broken. So congratulations if it is the case. And we will get confirmation of that. I have sent a message down to our official timekeepers to give me confirmation of that. But I'm going to give you unofficially the fastest lap ever around the circuit is now in the hands of Stuart White. Baby Vettel as we like to call him. He, of course, is on the way to Formula 1 right now with uh, signing for the Sauber Formula 1 team as part of their development program. He is definitely South Africa's biggest hope of getting back into Formula 1 with an official driver in that series. So congratulations, if that is the case, to Stewie and the team down at Maui um, Mobile Homes, Janetta. I'm sure Craig Jarvis is ecstatic about that. His car is the fastest car to ever circulate around this. Just checking up as to how things are going on our social media feed as well. It's great to have a whole bunch of people joining us throughout the day. And I'm sure you'll be joining us throughout the uh, four hours of racing too. You don't have to stick around for the whole time. I know that uh, here in South Africa, it's not always easy to be on uh, live stream unless you're on uh, a format that gives you unlimited data. Hopefully you've got one of those and you can stay with it for the whole time. But if you can't, just keep jumping in every now and again and uh, come and see what we're up to here <coughs> in East London. That live feed, of course, is on ILEB. And if you want to pick up on anything else in terms of the, the live action coming from here, you can also get on to ZA Timing. Our live stream timing is coming through ZA Timing. And you can pick up on exactly what's happening on the track as they tick them off one by one. Roger Stevens just joined us. How's it going, bud? Thank you so much. Of course, he is the, uh, the man who used to look after all of our Falcon Polo and Engine Polo Cup drivers. Still participating as a COC at karting and at uh, various levels of motorsport down in the Eastern Cape. And his son currently piloting the Aston Martin of uh, Paul Hill. 
And that Calix Aston Martin going really well. Speaking of going well, another car that's going exceptionally well is the McLaren MP4 Charles Orangis. He's the lone pilot in the hour endurance race here as part of this four hour. Greg Walker, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it, buddy. Hope you're enjoying it. And uh, so far, things going according to plan for some of the teams, but some of them are really battling at this point. So it's not going to be easy to uh, get this race finished up. And uh, as you can see, we've lost the car. And you would have seen if you'd been on the live stream with us over the last hour or so. The car that won the last two races in this championship is now parked on the back end of a flatbed and actually been loaded back into its transporter from the triple three team there of Fritz Kleinanz and James Forbes. So that's how things are standing at this stage coming across the line and down towards uh, Potter's Pass where you can see the shot there. McLaughlin followed very closely by the Honda and Gerald Wright going to try and squeeze up the inside of him to see if he can get ahead of uh, Jared Evans and uh, Dane Angel's Honda Type R Civic. Another lap completed by our leader, the Janetta of Stuart White. I don't think that uh, planning was just right in terms of uh, the timing down there. I did see Colin go down there to see whether or not the Janetta was going to come in, but it seemed to be a little bit too early for my liking. That car can run at least an hour <coughs> on a tank of juice. So maybe they had, maybe they saw an opportunity that they wanted to try and capitalize on. They don't really have to worry too much about it because if they're not <coughs> really being uh, fought with too much by anybody else out there. And at this stage, the only car that I think it's on the same lap as them is Michael Steven. So uh, he might have actually lost a lap as well on the last couple while we've been checking the action in pit lane, etc. Rion Bortman is up to third. So Bortman now looking for a chance to <coughs> get himself up. And then Peggy Bonner got a little bit of a frog in the throat. So I'm not quite sure what's going down here. It's maybe just the, the additional amount of oxygen available to us here in East London. McLaughlin is uh, about to be taken by Michael Steven. Gerald Wright trying to get through there on the Honda. He tries to get through there. Doesn't quite make it stick. In fact, it's Dean Wilson at the moment who's in that car. Big one. So Wilson and Wright sharing that car. Uh, blue flags waving frantically. Lights ablaze on the Janetta as it comes past and laps Frank and Mateo and Adcock once again. So this car out front is just dominating at this point so it's fantastic to see this youngster doing such a good job for his team if i look down at the current grid and i'm just going through in my head we've got three there must be about 12. rian's got two adcock's got one demetrio's got two arangis has got two uh, andrew horn's got one and Kosovo, if I remember, probably have about 18 or so. So we're looking at a, in the field of the top 16, there must be at least 35 to 40 ex South African championship drivers in this field. That shows you the caliber of driver that's being uh, thrown around and in, in the, on track at the moment. I've got the COC with me, and uh, Eric, you've got a little bit of information to feed us, buddy. What's happening out there? I will get him. I will get him live now. He's just he's in the middle of uh, jumping and uh, chopping and changing. I'm just getting confirmation. So just give me a second. Just watch the screen for a few secs, guys. I'll be back with you in a in a, in a few seconds time as the Janetta comes across the line. Now I'm just getting confirmation on that lap record. Up Sorry at the about the Janetta's pit to see what was going on there. There was a whole lot of nothing going on, and uh, Franco Damadia has just come past us, silent as a ghost. They definitely they weren't expecting us. The team guys are running down the pit lane just to actually see what's going on. We'll follow them down the pits and see what the story is. Engine is quiet, so. Not be working so late. They've taken the car into the box, so 
why they'll start doing some work on it, but they certainly weren't expecting them to come into the pit. And we will go straight into the pit and see what is happening over here. All right, Cole, I hope you can hear me on the PA system. Uh, if you can, I just want you to uh, come, out of the, come out of the grid there and uh, come out onto the, the, the pit apron because I've got a big announcement to make. We have got official timing and we have got official news that the outright lap record has been broken by Stuart White. So it is official. It is now official that the new outst uh, or outright lap record for the East London Grand Prix circuit is a 1 minute 16 zero seven six. So the young man that is leading this race at the moment in that Janetta is your new outright lap record. I've just got confirmation from downstairs and we are good to go. Call back to you. Right, uh, just a recap on that. You, the problem is what? Uh, the battery hasn't, hasn't been charging during the race, so we're just uh, connecting a new battery at the moment and hopefully you can start it and get going. Awesome. Quick battery change and rock and roll. 100%, yes. So, some might call it super quick. <laughs> some, some might. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny for words. Right, Franco de Medium. They've got it in the, their truck. They've got a Lavazza machine. They make really lacquer coffee and they were lifesavers. But we also came to see the 23. <clears throat> the 23 has got the youngest team of drivers the, in the um, octogenarian side. Eric, why are you in? Uh, I was trying to pass the Cobra at the end of the straight and he turned in on me. So. Passing a Cobra down the straight, isn't that a, isn't that a bit ambitious? Quite, he went through poles, quite, poles pot, I called it, quite slowly. So I, I, I passed him at the end of the straight, but, uh, and there's somebody lapping us at the same time. So he obviously didn't see that I'd come through. Anyway, we can patch as best we can. Right, so a bit of, uh, we've got, um, there's, are there tie wraps? Duct tape for sure. And the elf will, number 23, will move out and assume battle for the rest of the race and um, beware of backdraft. Back to you, Greg. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, some awesome stuff down there. And, of course, uh, that's what happens. I was mentioning it earlier on. That little Lotus is going to take a bit of strain because it's so low slung. And even with the sports cars that are on a similar sort of level to it, it's very difficult to get past. And there was a few occasions where they came very, very close, those two, uh, those two cars in question, uh, the Lotus and that backdraft Cobra of um, uh, Trevor Graham, who's piloting it at the moment, but, of course, uh, partnered by Brian Martin. So those two guys were kind of at each other's throats for a little bit and it, uh, it looked like it could end up in tears at some point or other and that's exactly what's happened. So hopefully not too much damage and uh, still be able to, to circulate and uh, continue racing because the racing is continuing at the front end with a massive margin now of a lap of uh, racing between Michael Stephen in second place and Stuart White. We are looking at about three, uh, two minutes exactly to go before we get to the end of the first hour of racing. And I can see Brad Scorer coming out of uh, Beacon Corner in the BMW. Behind him is Trevor Graham. Michael Stephen in the Aston Martin about to come across the line with about two minutes to go before we finalize the first part of this race. And, of course, the first part is the first hour. Remember, with our live stream, we will be cutting at each hour on the hour just to give us a chance to, uh, to get backed up and uh, start again so that we don't have any issues with the live stream and you can continue with the action. So there will be about a two to five minute break in between each of the parts of the racing for the day but we will come back to you literally as soon as we've got that link set up again and uh, you can watch the entire race action for the next hour in about two minutes time so we'll keep going until then until that we of course will then do a, a close off and then uh, we'll see you in a few minutes time uh, to get that in. Patrick and Colin are down in pit lane they've got some action that's happening down there what's happening Carl? Right, this is the two things happening at one time. In about 45 seconds, it's the end of the one-hour race. And at the end of this lap, the Aston Martin will come in for a pit. Michael Stephen will get out, and Paul Hill will be getting in. Paul, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to keep Michael's pace. The guy's flying. 
I'm hoping I'm going to get close those times. I haven't a clue how I'm going to get there. Yeah, but this, you got this car for endurance racing. It's, desi it's designed for this. Um, you got to love being, just being part of this race. I just said, it's too long to repeat right now. Good luck for the race and have fun. He's got earplugs in. There's a bucket load of noise. And what we're going to try and do is walk along here and we can see the officials officialing because they're going to chuck out the, the flag for the end of the one-hour race. And in theory, they should give that to Charlotte Ranges. In as far as I'm aware, I hope if the box can tell me what, what if I'm right, they'll give it to Charlotte Ranges and he's winner winner chicken dinner again at around about the same time. I'm looking down the pit lane and waiting for the Aston Martin to come in. Everybody suited, booted, ready to rock and roll, helmets on, fire extinguishers ready. Um, I don't think I've ever seen Paul Hill this nervous, uh, rightfully so. They He's, he's got a big job to fill. That was the McLaren, the winner of the one hour. Unbelievable. Greg, we're going to go back to you until this Aston comes into the pits. Oh. Aston Martin coming through and uh, making his way across the line to complete another lap. The Ferrari pulls into pit lane at the same time. So we're going to have quite a bit of action here to close off this first hour. Uh, we're expecting the checkered flag any second now, of course, for that incredible McLaren MP4 of Charles Arangis as the Ferrari comes through. The Ginetta starting to come up on some more back markers to make its way back to some, some serious contenders there. One of them being Michael Steven, who's only just up the road from him. So there's a good possibility that we're going to see a change up here and another lap put into Michael Steven by that Ginetta of Stuart White. So this car is really going sweetly at the moment with no problems whatsoever there for Stuart White and that team. Uh, standing by, I'm just trying to pick up, see if I can spot where the McLaren is. He's into the complex right now. Maybe we just take that car from the complex, guys. The red and white car coming out of the complex and up towards the hill, towards the checkered flag. This will be for the Our Endurance Race win. And it goes to uh, Charles Arangis there for Stradale Motorsport. He's coming up towards Beacon. Uh, that's the corner at the top of the hill. Coming onto the main straight now behind the backdraft Cobra. We need to try and pick up on that car for the checkered flag, guys. Coming to the line now. Is the backdraft Cobra. Behind that is the red and white McLaren MP4. And in fact, he pulls into pit lane. How does he pull into pit lane without taking the checkered flag? I'm not quite sure if he's uh, maybe got the wrong information, but that's definitely not the idea. The idea is that he has to come across the line to take the checkered flag, surely. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be the right move here. He has to go, yeah. Well, he's coming in. And he's coming in to applause and whistles from his team, but he hasn't crossed the chicken flag. Cole, what's happening down there? Let's see if we can get Colin down there and find out what happened. As far as I know, Greg, I had a bit of a look. They showed him the flag in the last race, I think. That's what I saw. Aston Martin into the pits. This is an important stop for them. New owner. Door open. He's overshot. I think that's the first mistake they've made. It's in gear as well. Engines off, they need to move the car back so they can get the fuel into it. You've got the earth lead on. Castle needs to be go going back. Shouting, clutch, clutch, clutch. It's the kind of drama that you don't need because it puts everybody under a whole bunch more pressure. The 23 Lotus is in the pits um, again. Michael's gloves and transponder. You, each driver's got their own transponder. So Paul has put his transponder in. Fuel's going in. Belt's getting tightened. And let's go and have a look around this side. They will also do a bit of a cleanup of the windscreen. And if you have a look at the fuel coming in on this side and the air going outside, and Patrick, if you focus on that, with the air out thing when the fuel comes out of there then it's all like a full and they can rock and roll so windscreen the Porsche is just behind us it's brakes bled to death very quickly Michael that was hot and fast you enjoy it yeah that was fantastic uh, car's going really well, so 
Looking forward to the next one. What do you do now? You go and get some refreshment and have a bit of a stretch and chill and get ready for the next one. Yeah, I just have something to drink. We, you know, just have some, some fluids and ready to go. You smiling. Yeah, that was awesome. Good stuff. It was absolutely awesome. Right, that's the end of that pit stop. They will refuel the rig and wait for the next one. Just behind it, to us over here, the Porsche has, it's an ex-racing car. If it was a racing car, it'd still be racing. At the moment, it's a parked car. Greg, back to you for the racing. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, well, that brings us up to speed with uh, what's happened down in pit lane. And of course, uh, we've now got some action still to finish up here. But before we do, uh, just to run through how things have gone so far in the race, we're sitting with Stuart White at the front end of the race. Uh, he's now got two laps ahead of Paul Hill, who's now behind the Aston Martin's wheel. Nick Adcock has moved up into third place, just ahead of Brad Scorer, and Brad Scorer in the BMW, uh, the Baron Spears BMW. The Janetta coming into pit lane. This should be, uh, of course, for his scheduled pit stop. It's on the hour, so it's pro probably ideal time for Stewie to come in. Uh, he'll be handing across to uh, Craig Jarvis to take us uh, into the next hour. So uh, while, ma while Colin makes his way down there, this might be a good opportunity to sort of uh, give us a little bit of a roundup as to where we are. Shut the feet down and you can join us as we get back with the Janetta making its way back onto circuit. So it's Stuart White from Nick Adcock, Paul Hill, Brad Scorer and Mike McLaughlin in your top five. And as we get the Janetta in, we'll uh, be back in a few minutes time with uh, part three of our coverage here of the Bigfoot Express Freight 700, the 4-hour endurance for the South African Endurance Series. Right, well, the Janetta did indeed come into uh, for its uh, scheduled pit stop. They had a bit of a dodgy time getting the fuel filler in and the breather out. But Stubby White has got out of the car. Craig Jarvis is in. The door's about to get closed, but the refueler's hand is in the way, so you can't slam it. So as soon as the refueling's done, they'll close the door and rock and roll. Jarvis is in. Belts are tight. It's in neutral. Ignition on. They've got a cool camera that shows, instead of having rear view mirrors, they've got a rear view TV screen. So what we'll do is we'll go to the back here and we'll say to him, good luck, China. Have a lucky race. So over here, well, Patrick will come round. There's his little camera lens. Most of the international cars have got them. I'm speaking to Stuart White this morning, he said that it just makes it a whole bunch easier to know where they're going. Fuel is taking forever. And we're waiting for fuel to come out. The air is coming out into the bottle. We're waiting for fuel to come out of there. Right, there's fuel. There's something, there's something, let's see if we can get old Stewie, <clears throat> come and talk to us please, ooh, okay, Stewie, was that a good drive? Just take off the helmet. He's, uh, take off the helmet, and this is, this guy's a pro, he knows what he's doing, he'll adjust the ginger hair, he'll get things sorted up, and He's got his overall done up so the sponsors can get the Stewie that was, looks like it was hard work. Yeah, it's quite hard out there, but the uh, car ran faultlessly, so now we just need to keep keep managing it to the end. I managed the tyres to the end of the stand for Craig. He's going to double stand the tyres, and we might triple stand them and see how we go, but for now we're quite happy. just need to keep on doing the good work and see where we end up in the end. You had something loose floating around in the cockpit. Was it your drinks bottle? No, it wasn't a drinks bottle, it was still intact, so I'm not sure what it is. I fouled it once or twice and then kicked it away and I haven't fouled it again. So I don't know if it's just some wires or something, but it's all sorted now. Not like having something floating around that you've got to kick away around this track. Yeah, it's all right, it's just one more challenge, but we, we're all good, so now we just need to manage the car to the end. Go and get a drink, thanks for chatting to us, cheers. Thank you. Stewie White, the fastest South African ginger in this race. Right, back to you guys. Oh, Carl, we're actually hoping you get into him and uh, give him the notification that he's actually got the lap record. Wanted to see if we can get Stuart White's uh, confirmation on that and uh, how happy he is about that. So I don't know, before we wrap up, Carl, if you want to just shoot back down there and see if you can grab Stuart one more time and just see if you can get him to say, well, you know, I have the official lap record. I can see Colin is walking across there right now. So while he's going to fetch Stuart White, it is now Craig Jarvis at the wheel of that Janetta who leads things out by a good 
two-lap deficit over Nick Adcock. It's come down slightly. It's about 23 seconds now to Nick Adcock, who is there down in second place, and Paul Hill in third. But we've got the new outright lap record holder down with Colin Hasty in pit lane. Congratulations, Stuart White. I'll tell you what, the guy's a proper pro. He first went to get his Maui cap. I forgot to talk to you earlier. The lap record holder official, pretty cool, eh? Yeah, so we officially got it, so we knew we had the clear clear air for the first few laps, so I could push a bit to try and get a gap over to Aston. Then the safety car came out, but it actually played in our favour, but it seemed like they picked up the wrong car and helped us gain a lap on the Alicia, so bad luck for them, and it can happen to anyone, we're very happy with the lap record. Thank you to Craig, half motorsport, Maui mode times, making it all possible, and now we just need to try to see the car through to the finish. Yeah, but wouldn't it be cool? When you come in, bolt on a new set of tires for the last little stint, nice low level, temperature gone out of it, and then really go for it. Well, by that time, we'll just be thinking of finishing the race. So we're done pushing the car to the limit. Now it's all about managing to the end. Now, come on, Stewie. It's a race. Flat out, every lap. No, it's not all about the lap record. It's about a team as well, and they deserve a result. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Thank you. We just pull your leg. <laughs> Right, there you go, the new official lap record holder. The fastest ginger ever around this track. Back to you in the box. Thanks, Cole. Yeah, so we can wrap things up now from uh, East London Grand Prix Circuit and the Bigfoot Express Freight 700. Uh, we'll be back in about uh, two to three minutes, uh, possibly five if we get everything 100% right. But join us for part three of the action here from the 4-Hour Endurance Championship Race as part of the South African Endurance Series. For myself, Greg Maloney, we'll see you in a few minutes' time. Thanks, guys.